Thank you for visiting the Coin Saris channel again. Dear everyone, Basecoin vs SEC. I want you to consider the Ripple court case where one firm was involved with one token. SEC was unable to maintain consistency in their account and was caught on multiple occasions making things up in court. It made me look foolish. How are they going to keep their story straight with 13 tokens interweaving arguments in this court case the Ripple court case's central focus was on Director Hinman and his remarks, which they attempted to sidestep. Unfortunately, things are considerably worse in Coinbase's. Not even saying that was the previous government, though. They have Gensler on staff. One of its representatives, Gary Gensler, spoke before Congress and declared, you know what, we don't have the authority to regulate crypto exchanges. You must legislate new laws, we require those powers. Star witness will be those recordings of Gary Gensler stating, we don't have authority, we need you to grant it to us, before later changing their mind, and the group decided to cowboy and establish their own rules after it failed. Coinbase finds it incredibly complicated as well. Since, once again, there was only one token at issue in the Ripple case, Coinbase will likely have to defend 13 different tokens in which they have a hand in determining whether or not they are securities. The SEC will unearth a plethora of evidence, some of which they might not even be involved with, I'm sure. However, this is the most enjoyable aspect overall, nobody gives a hoot about crypto's attractive fringe. Coinbase is a publicly traded corporation, you know, Fox News was involved in the Ripple lawsuit, and they occasionally bring it up. I also believe that a far higher degree of coverage and attention will be paid to the outcome of this court case. What this could mean for Gary Gensler and SEC is that they could suffer immense shame. And I really doubt he will still be alive when everything is all said and done. No one will have to worry about it. And I'm crossing my fingers that they'll be decent and find a workable solution. Gary isn't going to do that for us. No major statement, though, if he has succeeded as the future chairman of the SEC Bitcoin Lightning payments are now possible through Coinbase's partnership with LightSpark. For some reason, I know that many XRP investors feel compelled to despise Lightning. Opponents insist it is ineffective. Feel free to give it a go. Give Lightning a go, and download Stripe I can't stress enough how great it is. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it's not going to work for every single application. There is no way that the world's payments will be processed in the blink of an eye. That capability isn't there. However, it is excellent. And I beg you to kindly review it. If nothing else, at least you'll be able to tell fact from fiction. Lightning is actually rather good, as you will discover. After a year of steep cost increases at Bitcoin's foundation layer, we expect integration on Coinbase to shift more transaction volume away from there. Having one of the largest US players include rapid payments is going to help drive adoption, in my opinion. According to Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong, 108 million customers will soon be able to take advantage of what might be quicker and cheaper Bitcoin transactions as the company integrates Bitcoin's Layer 2 network. Everything isn't perfect, but it's nice and will become better, that much is clear. In the future, Lightning will try to convince you to host a Bitcoin node here, but in the meantime, download Stripe and give it a go. The 8 most lucrative cryptocurrency stories of the first quarter of 2024, and I'll warn you of this by recommending what worked I don't think last quarter will be very useful to you, but it does show us where we may focus our efforts for future growth. You have to acknowledge that was a tremendous quarter for me and currency, even though meme coins aren't my game. Among the top 10 most valuable cryptocurrencies by market capitalization, the joke-based category had the most profitable storyline, with 13 100% returns. 
the occasional bet on a meme coin isn't really my forte, but hey, I'll do it occasionally. My feelings about it, though, are mixed. Second, our web this is a story that relies on tangible goods being represented on the blockchain and you need to take it seriously. With a return of 285% in Q1, this came in second place, while AI came in third with a return of 222%. Both of these returns are big, so you can't ignore AI. He has to steal our money. Let's get down to brass tacks and discuss this with a major participant in conventional banking who is about to slam the door on a crypto sub-ecosystem that allows individuals to use financial services without. Returns for additional intermediaries were 98.9%. In this essay, all layer 1s are discussed at once, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana, which resulted in 70% returns, and GameFi which saw top performers return 123%. The thing I would tell you right now is this. During the bulk of the bear market, I was constructing positions on the layer 1 smart contract blockchain, but I'm not a fan of the lump sum narrative. Why because with those layer 1 smart contract blockchains, you're going to be able to pick up part of that action, whether it's DeFi gaming meme currencies or something else entirely. It's like a vast net, where you can catch practically every newly minted cryptocurrency. One of my portfolio's weak spots is gaming, which is something I really should work on. It's not an area I'm very knowledgeable about, but it might be one of the most quickly embraced for practical applications. You know, players are accustomed to putting monetary value on virtual items in games, not to mention how much logic it makes. The more we go ahead, the more integration you'll notice. Tokenizing real-world assets is something we need to discuss on the channel, therefore we'll have to recruit a gamer to help us out. We observe BlackRock's liquidity flows, securitization, and their locations. When it comes to tokenization, the new digital asset fund changes the game. According to Peter Gaffney, head of research at Security Tokens Advisor, this is a massive undertaking that will have a significant impact on legislation across the board. They'll start publishing plain laws and regulations before they even begin the task. A partnership between BlackRock and SEC Uritis to launch a digital asset fund is making headlines, and it might have far-reaching effects on the US market for tokenization that abides by regulations. Although this isn't the first product of its kind, BlackRock's USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund bill is likely to attract serious money managers and institutional investors. The fund will invest only in cash, US treasuries, and repo agreements, classifying it as a digital money market product. What they're doing here almost sounds like Celsius or Anchor Protocol. As we go on, we'll get into more detail about this, but it's BlackRock's plan to ETF everything, it's a dystopian nightmare, but it's the direction we're heading in. All you're doing is holding digital dollars on the notion of network earning yield back. Arc by Kathy Wood's Grayscale has been around for a while, but it has been hemorrhaging money since its fees are so expensive. Bitcoin ETF has record outflows of 87 million, which is more than GPTC Inc. According to your new players in this space, BlackRock is currently number one, followed by Fidelity and Kathy Wood. However, it appears that her funds are starting to run out of steam. As I've mentioned before, the winner, who is probably going to be BlackRock, will control most of the volume in this space. Even though they're really significant, I was hoping that Fidelity would be a more prominent role than they have been. There will be two or three additional players, but they won't be very significant. They've had a significant presence in the crypto space for quite some time. They enable the purchase of Bitcoin and Ethereum on their site, and they are also involved in mining. But right now, Kathy Wood isn't going to make it, and BlackRock's is playing to lose. 
sincerity is likely to be too at this stage as well. Fidelity may not come out on top in the competition for the best Bitcoin ETF, but that doesn't mean they won't make waves in the crypto industry in the future. I hope everyone will remember to back John Deaton in any way they can, he has simply released this. I have built my life around accomplishing goals that appeared insurmountable to others. If anyone can win this race, it will be me. John here, especially when they're fighting against such evildoers, we must back candidates that are pro-crypto. Forget about cryptocurrency, Elizabeth Warren. All the rest is secondary. You should despise Elizabeth Warren because she is deceitful and shady, she must be removed from office. If John is the one to help her retire comfortably, I will be content. Try to spread the word and do what you can, if you can donate to John, that would be fantastic. You must cast your ballot for him if you reside in Massachusetts. Considering the current state of the cryptocurrency market Bitcoin down roughly 1% we should all do all we can to boost our own. Ethereum XRP experienced a decline of almost 3% on the day. Looking at the big picture, Solana is down 3.5% compared to Avalanche, which is 3.5%. About 3.5% of Cardano's value has been lost. As you may have noticed, I made a previous comment a few videos ago in which I mentioned that I'm going to sit on Flare until I find a purchasing chance. Flare is one coin that's about even on the day but up over 16% on the week. On Thursday, there will be major developments, and I hope people don't see it as a sign that no studio was called a flare. Uh, I hope it keeps going up, they're creating a lot of value. I got lucky and got in at a reasonable price, so I can indulge in flare, get rewards, and stake. In my opinion, the best course of action is to do nothing and wait for opportunities to present themselves. I can't promise that the price will drop any further if it isn't flare, which it could not be. When there are several significant events, it's okay. I will construct the wine collection in another location. That in no way implies that flare will be seeing any sort of price drop in the near future. The truth is that I have no idea what the future holds for this industry has a bit of a lull occurred when it comes to interest rates and the Federal Reserve, does anyone really feel scared you can't buy dips unless you have some cash on hand, so be prepared for whatever comes up in the wider financial sector, whether it's regulatory issues with the SEC or lawsuits filed against the Ethereum Foundation. Cryptocurrency could take a little hit from where it is now. On the other hand, there are a lot of fantastic value drivers that might just as easily launch this rocket, and Warren, I'm not making any predictions, I'm just going to sit back and watch how this plays out. Compared to 2017, 18, and 19, this isn't a top priority. Premium cryptocurrency purchases have been on my mind for a while now. Plus, I'd be cool with it if this area completely explodes at some point, as I'm sure it will. Whether it's stocks or real estate, I'm not in a rush to start hoarding money anyplace, I'm just prepared to take a chance on anything else that offers an opportunity. Regarding certain events occurring in the world now, you must not be timid. Some terrifying thing is lurking around the corner at all times. The moment I lay eyes on anything I like, I'm prepared to jam out. For the time being, though, it's best to do nothing and observe how things develop. Tell me what you're up to in the comments. The video ends there. Do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye for now.